this image has been okay. on my screen for a second. I want to talk about this. The Virginia School Board um, um, to appeal the transgender bathroom ruling um, out of uh, Gloucester County, Virginia. Uh, the decision was made. <clears throat> the decision was made to give the um, to actually allow the student who was born a female now ha identifies as a as a male. Mm -hmm. um, they've given him the right to appeal uh, mm -hmm. so that he can get the right to use the public restrooms, the school restrooms. This is falling underneath uh, in, in terms of all the legal um, components of it. I actually would leave it's that to you uh, to discuss that. Uh, but the it, it does fall underneath Title IX saying that that there is uh, they can't yes. get any federal funding for schools or any organizations rather that actually discriminate. And so this is the, the grounds for his, um, um, for his lawsuit. And the student's name is Gavin Grimm. Um, and he's suing, um, his attorney is from the ACLU and they're suing on behalf of him to give him the right. This falls right in line with all of the other controversies that are going on right now with the state laws that are um, that are being passed in North Carolina and uh, attempted to be passed mm -hmm. in Georgia and in Mississippi, basically saying forcing people to go to the restroom based on what their birth certificate says, essentially. This is the craziness that's going on. And so this is the case out of Virginia. This is a small victory for um, for the student because now he simply has the right to go a little bit further and to appeal to another high, to a higher court so that he can get the right to use the boys' bathroom at the schools in Virginia. What are your thoughts on this case? Have you had a chance to hear anything about it? Um, yeah, I have actually because I mentioned it. I mentioned it when the appeals court. So, so what what Ben is referring to, everyone. So the appeals court ruled in his favor a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, and this actually has been the, the North Carolina scramble because this is the fourth. This is the fourth circuit of appeals. This is a federal appeals court. So the fourth circuit is Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, and I believe South Carolina, if I remember correctly. So the fourth circuit includes North Carolina. So um, it's the South Carolina Attorney General and the governor, they've been kind of stewing and trying to figure out how would this ruling apply to them? Because mm -hmm. since it's looking at a federal legal provision, if they're saying this is unconstitutional for this reason, it would actually affect North Carolina. And the Attorney General in North Carolina had already said he would not enforce it because he felt it was an unconstitutional legal, you know, it was an mm -hmm. unconstitutional rule. So it'll be interesting to kind of keep close eye on North Carolina because this does actually matter. But what has happened procedurally here from this quick glance, because I did not see this case today. Mm -hmm. um, but what I just looked at and just found is that what they're what they want to do is that um, the appeals court, you know, made the decision. But what they can what they can call what they can request. Now, the school board is requesting what they call an en banc hearing. So it's a full panel hearing of all of the, the, the judges on the Fourth Circuit. Um, to hear their appeal, basically, of this case. And then after that, the next step would be a Supreme Court appeal. So this potentially could be a Supreme Court wow. um, decision. What's really interesting about this case is, I think if I remember correctly, if I read the facts correctly, at one point, the student was allowed to use, you know, mm -hmm. the, the boys' restroom. And then they, a rule changed. A similar issue happened. It was either Oklahoma or Colorado, um, where a, a younger student, like I think it was like a first or second grader, had, was, trans, was a trans girl. And had been allowed to use the girls' restroom at school, and then I don't know if parents complained or what happened. But then all of a sudden, the little girl was no longer allowed to use. Little girl had been was was had been physically more male trans um, girl, mm -hmm. uh, and and that but there in that case there was an anti discrimination provision in state law that prevented discrimination against transgender individuals. So that was a little different. But but this but it's interesting when schools will allow children to use a bathroom mm -hmm. or a public place of accommodation. When you have a certain pattern and practice, you allow something to happen, then all of a sudden you come down and say, no, no, no. I, I think in some ways it's even more violative than when you just ban it outright because you've already allowed someone, you've already acknowledged this person's right, right to exist and engage, and then you really have no reason to do it because but people complain. Like I think that's a that's a that's a easier case in some instances to make so this is yeah. actually very interesting for this young person, this young man and his family in this school district. But it's very interesting as we look at these four circuit cases. And particularly if this does result in a Supreme Court case, hopefully we'll have a full uh, yeah. a, a panel to hear it, not an eight, uh, you know, an eight judge court. <laughs> but um, but it could potentially, you know, set the tone for these cases as they're going forward. This definitely, you know, the decision, depending on how detailed the decision announced it is, it definitely gives 
those plaintiffs out there, you know, some more meat yeah. when they're filing suit. Yeah, that's um, thank you for giving that context from a legal perspective. She is our resident uh, legal scholar. Uh, so uh, <laughs> but no, 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 you actually you, you made it. You made it. <laughs> no, you, you you broke it down for us. So this is interesting. I think uh, I think that's a takeaway that that uh, these the journalists that are reporting on it. I really haven't seen anyone mention that this could actually be to lead to a Supreme Court hearing on the very issue that is spreading across the nation right now. So uh, this one case has the potential of having far reaching ramifications. And actually, now that I think about it in, in the uh, NBC version of this article that I read, they actually um, gave one of their reasons for trying to stop the further appeal was because of the fear of the far reaching ramifications. So mm -hmm. the attorney, the, uh, the, the attorney of the state or the school board attorney, right? Representing the school board, yep. he actually cited as that's a reason because uh, any decision on a higher level will have far reaching uh, ramifications. But I didn't notice any journalists actually bringing that out. So that's actually an amazing point to point out that this case, now that he's has the right to appeal even further, has the potential of going to the Supreme Court and and we all know that if the Supreme Court makes a ruling that it essentially has a force of law, this could really shape um, uh, transgender I mean, rights in the back restrooms. Yeah, go ahead. Well, and the issue and the two issue is, too, this is this is a school board policy. But the but the appeal, the issue they would be appealing would be whether or not it violates, you know, the Ninth Circuit and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem, though, right, because it's not just a state law or a specific county level law that's going up. It does have wider ramifications, you know. Is there an actual right? Like, is this discrimination under Title IX? You mm -hmm. know, this is still a rather not narrow context, right, for those institutions that would rely on Title IX funds or funds that could be question. tied to Title IX. Here's but, a great question. Um, how do yes. we think, this is from the chat room, how do we think um, the eight-person Supreme Court would rule on something like this? I, I think it would just be a split, like, you know, I don't think they could actually rule on it, right? I think it's... um right now without the conservative tilt what do you think i don't know okay so I mean, it just it depends because you know um who is kennedy? it is it uh is it kennedy that's always our toss-up on these yeah. things i mean kennedy you I know the way kennedy came kennedy. with marriage equality i mean i don't i think that you know the argument has been made in terms of how this is discrimination you know there isn't because when you look at like different levels of discrimination right look at like rational basis tests and things of that nature well I guess that's if you're, I don't know if that's the same under Title IX, if you're looking at discrimination under Title IX. Mm -hmm. um, I'd have to look at it with the exact test. But when we're talking about like, we're talking about racial discrimination or gender, gender discrimination usually, right? There are mm -hmm. different levels of tests the Supreme Court will look at because it depends upon like the different levels of protected classes there are, right? Like yeah. race-based discrimination has what they call strict scrutiny. And then there's like intermediate scrutiny for gender um, discrimination. And then everything else pretty much mm -hmm. um, it falls under what they call this rational basis test. But I still think you could argue that there is not a real reason to, like like someone said in 2016, monitor how people go pee-pee. We have family <laughs> bathrooms. There are, there are places where there are unisex bathrooms. I mean, this, this gets really wild. So I don't really know what it would look like in the eight. I mean, it's possible it could be a 5-3 split. It could be possible, you know, Roberts has surprised us at times. He Because there are a lot of people... Because this is also bad for business, as we're seeing yeah. for North Carolina. And the yeah. NCAA, actually, I don't remember the exact rule, what the exact wording is, but the NCAA, basically, any place that has these rules, they're they're not going to host events there. Like, you're going to lose money. Upstate Raiders. Right? If you're losing out NCAA, mm -hmm. NCAA money... Um, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say Upstate Raider in our chat room says that they believe that the uh, the the four person um, and I just lost it that quick. Uh, no, they believe that it would be a lower court. It would stay a lower court decision. Um, well, that's if it's split four mm -hmm. four. So if it's split four four, if it's a tie, right? If you have then a tie with the eight, mm -hmm. then it goes back to whatever whatever the original whatever the appeal decision was. That's the law for that, and that's only for that particular case. However, in this case, if it's a Fourth Circuit decision, it still arguably would apply to the rest of the Fourth Circuit, which would include North Carolina. And that is something that the governor and the attorney general and other folks, their, their, their session just started. I know someone mentioned that there have been some protests recently and um, over HB2. Uh, yeah, they're already losing a lot of money, you know, the, in, the but the NBA is looking at not hosting, wow. um, what is yeah. it, the All-Star game? Yeah next year 